I don't need to tell you that buying an investment property is a relatively significant financial commitment. But are you accounting for all the costs that come after buying the property? Hey everyone, Andy Trin from Duo Tax here for another video designed to help you become a better property investor. Owning a property comes with a lot of expenses, things like council rates, insurance policies, and maintenance costs can catch you off guard if you haven't planned for these expenses. When looking at investment properties, many people do calculations based on what their expected mortgage expenses are going to be and what the rental income is. If the rental income is greater than the investment loan, they assume that it will be a positive cash flow property, but that's not necessarily the case. Now, I wish budgeting could be as straightforward as that, but if you don't account for these expenses, you're going to find yourself in a bit of a tough spot. So in today's video, I'm going to share a few ongoing costs that property investors often don't account for in your budget. So grab a pen and paper and make sure you have them all covered. But before we start, we want to be clear that this video is for informational purposes. In no way should you interpret this as financial or tax advice. We always recommend working with a qualified financial advisor or tax agent to give you the best advice for your situation. All right, let's jump straight into the first expense and that is insurance. So this expense should be a no brainer, but I find that investors often forget to assess the range of different types of insurances you should be taking out on your property. Of course, as a landlord, you're going to want to get landlord insurance. But did you know that there are different policies for different things? So you could get cover for just the building, which will cover any kind of building loss, like damage caused by a fire. Then there's contents only cover, which ensures items like furniture in your building that you lease out to your tenants from loss or damage. Ideally, you want to take out a policy that covers both these things and one that offers additional benefits like loss of rent, emergency work, temporary repairs, mortgage discharge, and more. Obviously, the cost will depend on your property and what you're insuring, but you can expect to pay at least anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000 each year. The second expense would be for accountant fees. Unless you can do it yourself, which is not something that I would recommend you do, you need an accountant to help you with your tax returns at the end of the financial year. You need to account for things like depreciation, rental income and expenses. Your accountant will help you work out what you can claim and what you cannot claim. The next expense you should remember to account for are repairs and maintenance. There are many things that can go wrong with the property. The walls might need a fresh coat of paint. You might need to replace a broken fence or fix a leaky pipe. It's important that you have funds set aside for these maintenance expenses. Some people will put aside a percentage of rental income of around, let's say 5%. Others will set a figure each year for maintenance. You have to trial and error with this expense because it's likely to be unpredictable. But the most important part is that you have the funds that you can access for repairs and maintenance because it's an unavoidable expense. Fourth on the list are advertising fees. Yep, bet you didn't think of that one. Well, you'll likely need to pay advertising fees should your property require new tenants, especially if your existing tenants vacate unexpectedly. The next expense isn't mandatory, but it's definitely something you should consider investing in. And that is a property manager, who obviously has their fees. Unless you're renting the property yourself and doing the managing yourself, you will probably hire a property manager to do that for you. They'll market your property, deal directly with prospects and tenants, collect rent and handle maintenance, tenant complaints and any evictions. The cost of hiring a property manager will depend on which real estate agency you use, but usually they tend to charge anywhere from around 5 to 8% of the rental income. Expense number six are utilities. Utilities are a common ongoing cost of living in a property and include things like electricity, gas and water. Of course, the tenant covers these costs, but if you have a shared water meter that you can't force the tenant to pay or you're offering it as a value add, then you'll need to take these into account. 
This expense can range from $30 to $200 per month, depending on the property's location, size, and usage of utilities. Seventh on the list of expenses you should remember to account for are vacancy costs. Unfortunately, vacancy periods are inevitable. Sometimes, especially if your tenants aren't signing longer leases, so you'll need to factor in the fact that you're still going to be paying property expenses but not generating rental income to cover them. The next expense that investors often forget are strata fees or body corporate fees. You will need to pay body corporate fees or strata fees if you own a unit or a townhouse that's within a complex. These fees are used to maintain amenities within the buildings such as swimming pools, gardens, lifts or a gym. Keep in mind that more features will mean higher body corporate fees. And last but definitely not least is land tax. Honestly, of all the expenses on the list, this is the most unaccounted for expense amongst the investors. Land tax is a state tax that you have to pay each year on what's called the unimproved value of the land. This is the property's value without taking into account any improvements such as building, landscaping, paths and fences. Generally, there is a threshold. So if the unimproved value of the land falls below the threshold, you won't have to pay land tax. However, each state has their own threshold amounts, so you'll have to check the relevant Revenue Office websites for more information, or your accountant can tell you. The Northern Territory is the only territory or state that doesn't require property investors to pay land tax, but I've left links to the other states in the description box below. So there you have it, the list of expenses that often seem to be unaccounted for. Of course, you need to remember things like your mortgage repayments and income tax, but there are far more expenses than many investors might have imagined. If you haven't bought a property yet, I would suggest sitting down with a property manager and accountant to formulate a budget that takes into account all the upfront costs of buying a property like stamp duty, building inspections, conveyancing fees, and lender's mortgage. And then also all of the ongoing costs like the ones we mentioned in this video. This way, you can make a realistic estimate of the expected return and cash flow. I hope you found this video valuable as part of your property planning journey. If you did, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more property investing tips. I'm Andy Trin from Duotax, see you next time.